Because before meeting Manny, I just used to, my raps were like large run-on paragraphs. And uh, Manny was like, nah, Lil Mac, you got to break it down and to uh, 16 bars and then eight bars for the hook. And so he kind of coached me on how to uh, arrange the songs. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. I, when I look at, uh, you going over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when I look at uh, just coming up in New Orleans, how was it, far as we gonna get on the music a little bit, like No Limit, uh, that movement, when it first took off, how, how, did, how was it for you? Okay, well, the strange thing is I had already been professionally recording records before I, before No Limit came about. Okay. Like I, my first album came out when I was 12. That was like wow. 1989. And I was introduced to the music industry by Gregory D and Manny Fresh, who were a local group in New Orleans at the time. And um, by the time I um, linked with No Limit, or by the time the No Limit uh, movement had 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 started like right around that time that it was on the verge of, of blowing up. I was um, probably at that period in my life where I was like, yo, I, something has to happen. Something has to happen. So um, I had a few offers from a couple of different record labels and- um, How old were you when you met them? When I met- When, when, you, when, you, when this no started limit. happening for you? I was about 19. I was just trying to, you know, so yeah. you had already, who put you in the music at 12? Well, um, like I, I, as I mentioned, Greg, a, a guy named Gregory D from New Orleans put um, a record out in 1986. Uh, it was Gregory D and Sporty T. They were in a group called the Ninja Crew. The Ninja Crew actually split up around '87, and Gregory D found a DJ from the Seventh Ward named Manny Fresh. Got it. And they linked up. There you and, go. And uh, Greg told me that um, he told me from day one, he said, "Lil Mac, when I get on, I got you." And um, he came, got me, and I was like 11 years old. And they produced him and Manny Fresh produced my first record, and it was released in 1989. So I was called. Uh, the name of the album was The Lyrical Midget. Wow. And and so do you still got you still got that music? I can still find that music. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. That's and real. and so that was the young Manny Fresh. I always yeah. thought it was different phases of Manny Fresh anyway. So that just it answers questions for me. Right. In fact, if you look at the video, I had a video out back then called I Need Wheels. Manny is actually sitting right behind me. Oh yeah. And, um we were on the, the streetcar on the trolley in the video. And you'll get to see a young Manny Fresh with like the high top fade and everything. I need wheels. How was that like back then producing music uh, uh, and just basically putting out music during that time with Manny Fresh? Like, how was that? Well, it was working. Great. With, it, working was learning, with him, you know? it was a learning experience for me. Like, Manny actually taught me how to arrange my songs in uh, what I would call song mode. Because before meeting Manny, I just used to, my raps were like large run on paragraphs. And uh, Manny was like, nah, Lil Mac, you got to break it down. And, to uh, 16 bars and then eight bars for the hook. And so he kind of coached me on how to uh, arrange the songs. That is something. And watching him do beats eventually made me want to, you know, when he was probably outside or something, because we used to record in his bedroom. So when he was outside, I would sneak and go plug his equipment up and try to tap on the buttons so I could learn how to make beats. And eventually he sat down and showed me how to do it because he knew if not, I was going to break his equipment. Because I was a kid. <laughs> He was like 20, 19, 20. I was like 12, and he yeah. just knew that I was a kind of a, a mischievous and stubborn kid who uh, was going to do what I wanted to do. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.